Good evening. Welcome to the Billy Wilder Theater, home of public programs for UCLA Film and Television Archive. My name is KJ Relf. I'm a film programmer with the Archive. Uh, and I'm Mark Toscano. I'm a film preservationist at the Academy Film Archive. Um, and you are here tonight to celebrate the second night of our five-part retrospective of the work of Barbara Hammer, um, who's here with us tonight. <laughs> I wanted to give a couple thanks. Um, our partner for this series was the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, who made um, these five nights possible, and also Barbara and Flory's visit possible, um, specifically Randy Haverkamp. Um, our promotional partner, Los Angeles Film Forum, um, who and Adam for all of your help in getting the word out about this series. Um, also, yeah, thank you, Adam. Um, we'd also like to thank Carl McCool at Ele Electronic Arts Intermix, who provided the second film that you'll be watching tonight, uh, a video work. Also, Mei Hedong at the Academy Film Archive, who helped uh, get all of the 16 millimeter prints here. And of course, Flory Burke, Barbara's wife, uh, who, whose coordination and collaboration made this entire weekend possible too. Thank you so much, Flory. <laughs> Um, one more thing before we get a little deeper into the intros. So tomorrow night, um, we've been really, really lucky to work with AFI Fest um, to show um, Nitrate Kisses, Barbara's film Nitrate Kisses, a new 16 millimeter print um, at the Spielberg Theater, which is inside the Egyptian in Hollywood. Um, that's showing at 8.15 tomorrow night. And Adam, if you want to like wave, Adam has extra tickets to that screening. So if you wanted to go and you weren't able to get a ticket online because they're kind of, um, I don't know how their ticketing system works. It's a little weird. But um, Adam has tickets. So see him at the uh, after the show and he can give those to you. Um, yeah. Mark, did you want to say a couple things about the prints we're watching tonight? <clears throat> um, I, I wanted to say a little bit about not just the prints, uh, the two prints uh, that you'll be seeing tonight, but just in general over the course of these five uh, programs and, and also the sixth program being the AFI screening of Nitrate Kisses tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> Barbara is an artist who has pretty much embraced every medium that exists. I mean, she's just um, fearless uh, experimenter and tinkerer, and but 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 tinkerer is it seems like too diminutive a word because she's not just kind of playing around in a superficial way. She does these deep dives into these technologies. And for those of you, I know a lot of you were here last night. You saw some. Um, elaborate like um, multi-role um, contact printing works like with Dactactics. tactics you saw optical printing re-photography stuff with, like women I love you saw animation you saw uh, Amiga computer animation with Nono Nuki TV tonight you'll see uh, one of her early experiments with color video from 1976 the, the middle film tonight um, you saw evidentiary bodies last night which is a three screen piece with all kinds of elaborate image manipulation I mean she's just absolutely fearless in um, her exploration of different media but one thing um, that really Really marked her work over many decades was her um, her passion for 16 millimeter film because uh, analog photochemical film I know a lot of you here tonight are fans of film and you love film and um, I love it too obviously I'm a film restorationist and I work with it a lot but it um, it's really exciting for somebody like me who really loves to work on this kind of stuff as an archivist um, to work with um, the body of work of somebody like Barbara who is so lovingly crafted these films in an almost sculptural way sometimes like Dyke Tactics the originals for Dyke Tactics are so complicated and so elaborate and it's almost like um, like she's woven this thing together from four rolls of, of uh, different photographic material. And I mean, so it's really fun for me to get to work on it. But what's even more gratifying and exciting and fun for me is that I, I get to actually preserve and uh, make new prints of these films on 16 millimeter. I mean, in an era where maybe it's a little too easy to digitize things and just show them digitally or have them streaming somewhere, it means so, so much to me that not only the Academy and my colleagues there and my supervisors there support me to continue to really dedicate myself to preserving films on film and on 16 millimeter. But also then we have partners like UCLA Film and Television Archive who are still dedicated to very high quality 16 millimeter projection, as well as like Film Forum and Echo Park Film Center. And we, I feel like we have a lot of venues in LA that are actually quite supportive of and dedicated to film. And it, But it's been fun to also see as we've been restoring these films at the Academy, 
we've been sending so many prints out to so many venues. Like Barbara was just in Denver and Boulder and they had great screenings there on 16. And so I, I just wanted to call your attention to the fact that um, this work is all being done on 16 millimeter film when it's a 16 millimeter film. And uh, I feel like we should all be aware of how lucky it is that we get to see this stuff on 16 and looking and sounding so great. So I, to that end, I want to thank UCLA uh, Film and Television Archive, but also, and my colleagues at the Academy and all of my lab uh, colleagues, people I work with at various labs, especially Color Lab in Maryland, um, who have done all the preservation work with me on these films. Um, but also uh, to Jim up in the booth, who's just a brilliant projectionist, and it's always a pleasure to, to show films here when he's projecting. So, yeah. um, so please come to some of the other shows. You'll see, um, it, it's, with the exception of um, the, the most recent film uh, that uh, Barbara made with Joey Carducci called Generations from 2010, um, everything is either a new or a restored 16 millimeter print. And that's really, really exciting um, for me, especially to be able to, to share that with you all. So I, I hope you can make it to some of the other screenings. So just wanted to say that. Um, so tonight's program, um, Mark and I started watching films, I mentioned this last night, in, in April and uh, began crafting these programs a couple months ago and, and each of them is focused around, uh, we didn't want to do it quite cr chronologically, um, but we did more loose themes, I suppose. Um, and the, tonight represents this idea of autobiography and, and kind of explores some of Barbara's work with essay filmmaking. Um, and these are deeply emotional and highly personal films um, that really evoke this active achievement, uh, active achievements in self-definition that are constantly changing. And I know Barbara likes to talk about rebirth and, and this endless rebirth that we're all going through as we change and grow older and evolve. Um, so the three films that we're here to watch tonight, the first is one of her first 16 millimeter color films. Uh, the second is an early video work. And then the third is I believe the longest uh, form film that we're, or the longest film that we're showing in the program, yeah. Um, so I wanted to invite Barbara up before we watch these films to say a couple words, Barbara. I love what you said, it's so beautiful. Uh, oh my, it's so wonderful to be here again and the attention these two folks have given to my work. You can imagine how deep my heart keeps going down, 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 and then up, up, up. It's a whirlwind, and last night I couldn't sleep, you know, after that Q&A and Mark crying on the stage. Yeah, and maybe KJ tonight. No, I don't know if we're going to go the same places. I don't think so. But anyway... Yeah, <laughs> it's really, and to see these films, especially the second one, um, is something I haven't seen for 40 or 50 years, so um, stress scars and pleasure wrinkles, so that's going to be um, a surprise, and the restoration has been beautiful, you know, I just really look forward to seeing Nitrate Kisses too. So please enjoy this uh, program of um, exploration of the autobiography once again. Thank you for being here. Such an astounding thing to watch with everyone here, truly. Oh, I'm so happy with the work <laughs> that um, Mark Toscano has done at the Academy and restoring the film. It's just beautiful. I see things that I never saw before. <laughs> and uh, I see mistakes I made and, <laughs> you know. Um, and really, I so appreciate both of you spending your time looking at so much work over such a long period. Thank you for bringing me here. It, thank you for being here. It was thrilling. I couldn't have asked for a better way to spend my time, honestly, to get to just take a whole day to sit in a dark room with Mark and watch so much of your work. Really great. Um, I wanted to ask about seeing stress scars and pleasure wrinkles again, because you said it had been maybe 40 years oh, yeah. since you'd seen it. Yeah. I didn't remember it at all. Really? It was, yeah. And um, I just love the first part where I'm um, just talking about the scars. But when I get into the pleasure wrinkles, you know, put me to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all those girlfriends, you know, twirling around in the backyard and, you know, no definition, the face is lost. And, you know, it didn't have the punch 
that those little personal stories that are so funny because they're such minor little, you know, changes in your body that I wouldn't even mention them. I think maybe that's why I made the film, mm -hmm. <laughs> was to be funny, but... <laughs> Was that all, was it freeform? Had you written some of it before? Or did you just kind of go up and riff? It feels like your stream of consciousness exploring these memories. Yeah, especially with the second part with the girlfriends. That yeah. was all extemporaneous. Yeah. And then the first part, I I don't really remember, but I, you know, I did have the order of the scars in mind. And... Um, had I written it, I've never seen the script. So as I've gone through my archive, I haven't yeah. found that. So maybe it was spontaneous. And I know it didn't get into the San Francisco Film Festival. And I had the opportunity to meet a judge of it. And I said, why didn't you program it? Yeah. And she told me that I needed to edit it tighter. And um, so I was very interested to watch it tonight and see what she meant. <laughs> and, you know, I think it's when I'm waiting for the people in the television booth to make the switch to the new face or the, the new sequence. Um, but maybe we should talk about the last part, too. I don't know. But it was really funny to see it. And I don't know. I don't know who I am, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> this kind of a program can really mix you up in terms of your <laughs> self-identity. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but, well, I think that that's what's so great about watching these films, each from, I mean, the first two are from the 70s, but the next being from two decades later, and just seeing that evolution of you trying to learn who you are, which is an ongoing process for all of us, and that we're able to share in that process with you by watching these works. I mean, that's how we share in that process with you. So I don't, you, you're asking who am I, or, or who was I, but did you feel like when you made that film, or when you made the other two that we watched tonight, that you knew who you were at that moment? Or is it always this, this searching and, and attempt at redefinition? Mm -hmm. Now, how long did it take you to think of that question? <laughs> uh, I don't know right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, do you know yourself right now? No, no. Okay. <laughs> now we're yeah. Now we're talking. <laughs> yeah, that's just it. Um, you know, as I've gotten older and with illness, I see a different part of myself. I'm very happy to welcome it into the world. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of a relief uh, to be more concerned about others than myself. Um, and to be appreciative of every facet of humanity and every breath on the planet and every little growth in the gardens here at UCLA. Um, I think maybe we always think who we know who we are at that moment. And yet, if you did trace your life as I've done, then you would see, oh, you didn't. Mm -hmm. Or as you say, you were that then, mm -hmm. but now you're that. Mm -hmm. you know? And, and um, I suppose it's all a, a circle, and I just think how audacious it was of me to make my work, my life. You know, and at that point, time I was thinking there's no lesbians on the screen yeah. and that's why I did it yeah. you know I thought well I just can't go out and interview lesbians and then that'll be just there but what if I follow this one life mm -hmm. what will that reveal mm -hmm. and so that was really my intention from the get-go when I came out and then began to study film mm -hmm. um, so I feel successful in that regard, yeah. that I've gone almost from birth to death. Mm -hmm. And and in this process, I mean, you said something last night that, that stuck with me, that, and I don't know that you meant this literally, but that when you're making work, you're not necessarily thinking of who's going to see it or who's, or your audience. You, you're not, they're not lingering or looming large in your mind, and I'm sure that that's freeing because you're not sort of considering, you know, judgment or criticism. But... The, the impact and the legacy that these works have had on 
a filmmaking community, on a queer community, on a feminist community, really they're so impactful and meaningful. And so I'm wondering if you're if you were aware of that like writing that legacy and that history as you were doing it and the impact of that. No. No, not at not at all. In fact, I felt misunderstood many times, or I felt neglected, or I felt discriminated against. And it wasn't just in film; it could be in teaching and many other areas of my life. Um, and so, it's sort of really there's a rebirth in, now in terms of artists see my work. I'm now part of an art community that I always wanted to be, you know. Um, because I always saw my films as fine art, as well as the other genres that they could be mixed up with. Um, so it's been um, a road that has revealed itself to me as I've been able to go along and feeling so lucky that, you know, like about eight years ago, Two men went to a residency that I'd been in in Stockholm, and I'd left Nitrate Kisses there as a representative of who I was, because you're supposed to do that as an artist. And they opened the box, and they pulled it out, and this one curator says to the other, we have to put it in our gallery. That's all it was based on. And now they've represented my work in Europe for nine years. And then I ran into, um, I was in another gallery, and I just said to the woman, because she, she had a book on horses in the back, and I said, you know, oh, I should be in your gallery. And she said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that happened. And, you know, one thing I guess I found out is that you should ask for what you want. And um, you really, you go back to the retrospectives I've had, well, I asked for them. No, you don't sit around, and I'm saying this to all of us, because we're trained, especially as women, to wait around and be asked, right? The old dance card, you know, you sit in the corner and you wait. So at the Museum of Modern Art in, in um, New York, where I had my first retrospective, um, the curator, Sally Berger, was inviting me to talk about Maya Darren, because I knew a lot about her, and they're going to do a retrospective of her work. So the third time there, I thought, what am I doing? I'm giving myself away. For you know, else. Yeah. yeah. And I said to her, you know what I really want? And she said, no. And I said, a retrospective. And she said, oh, I'll go to the film committee. Uh -huh. And you know, a week later, she called, and it was on, on the books. Just a week later. <laughs> well, I don't know, a couple <laughs> <Yeah>. weeks. <laughs> but shortly thereafter, they had approved. And if I hadn't said anything, I wouldn't have had one, and that wouldn't have started the ball rolling. So I think we all need to be forthright with what we want in the world, you know, in terms of our own career, as well as the politics that we face today. Well, thank you. I didn't know if that would bring that forth. <laughs> I was thinking that actually while watching at the first film, X, and just the act of saying, I, 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 me, 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 and forcing, not not forcing yourself on your audience necessarily, but asserting your place in in life in history it's so it's so powerful and it seems i don't know if that translation is lost over time but to think about that happening in the early 70s is such a just that act of saying i mm -hmm. and saying your name and in, and even if it might be embarrassing to watch years later it's it's such an important act mm -hmm. I'm not embarrassed at all with that film. There's yeah. other films. That <laughs> <laughs> now, that one, um, I was very happy that same gallerist discovered X and actually has auditioned it and, you know, and kind of brought it forth so that I looked at it in a new way. I thought, well, it's a lot of strength in that. You know, I remember the criticism that came to me probably from the film school I was at, and that was that I didn't make the X more strongly. You know, I'm oh, very delicately face. moving my bangs and <laughs> putting the X on my face. I mean, it's funny how, you know, you think of those things years later. But in that regard, because I've been signing a lot of books and I say to most everybody, you know, be brave. Be yourself. You know, don't hang back. What if each one of us were revealing? Really, what we felt. Yeah. Getting dressed in the morning even. You know, what am I putting on? What is this outfit for? Yeah. And why am I performing it? 
You know, if we, I'm mean, just that one little thing. If we did that in our artwork, you know, which is what we're talking about tonight, then we have a, a real chance of um, breaking through a trained tradition of crossing your legs, you know, um, you know, yeah, of um, waiting for the other person to make the introduction. Uh, and that's what we so desperately need is talking to each other and listening, deep listening, deep, deep listening, so that we can hear what the other says. It's a very Pauline Oliveros concept. Yes, of course, yeah. she comes to mind, <laughs> yeah. deep listening. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of choosing what to put on in the morning, you yeah. two have always been so stylish. It's amazing. Everything in Tender Fictions is just so great. <laughs> And that oh, maybe we should think about a new festival for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to. Uh, there's something that you write about in your in your biography um, in Hammer, and mention a bit in this film that I didn't notice before because I hadn't read your your autobiography before watching this for the first time, and that's the the horse story, the story of Red Flame. I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it's in, it's in the first two pages of the book that you were selling tonight. Mm -hmm. um, and what struck me is, one, that you were super into horses as a kid, too. But also, there's this interest in almost Bambi-like story yeah. and uh, that you wrote when you were seven about a horse who loses his friend because he dies in the woods. Mm -hmm. And that just keeps coming back and back in your work and the fact that you were talking about this when you were seven and that each of your films kind of touches on this idea and even in Stress Scars and Pleasure Wrinkles you talk about when you leave and when you leave this earth and the, the, wrin the wrinkles and the scars that you'll accumulate along the way. Mm -hmm. It's just such a full circle, especially reading that, that first page in your biography tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's taken a long time to die. And um, <laughs> um, and that's something that we're afraid of. And then we've best been trained to be afraid of, mm -hmm. once again. Um, and then I'm very interested in deconstructing that fear right now and being out in my process of dying and um, attempting to choose my own death, um, although it's not allowed in the state that I live in, in New York, to have a physician-assisted right. death. Um, although I strongly believe in it. And, you know, our whole path is bent on making the, that path to the point where we have that chance to discover it. And if we're lucky enough, not so deeply drugged, you know. And so just being old now and having some of the experiences you read about, a lot of childhood memories come back. People I met here tonight, I've signed books, you know, um, like the uh, relative of Barbara Page, who's a great star of my film on Elizabeth Bishop. Um, and she mentioned I was at ben Bennington. Well, now I remember, which I didn't when I was talking to her, visiting her room, you know, seeing her early photographs on the wall. And the whole experience has come back. And while I'm waiting for to come in, because I had to eat something, I hadn't had dinner, I meet Jonathan Hall, who translated for me in Tokyo when I was working on Devotion. Um, it's just um, to continue to be articulate, if I can, all the way through, then you really might have at least one woman's life on screen, as honest as she could make it. I'd love to turn it to the audience. Um, we have a microphone, a wireless microphone, if there are any questions. Um, yeah. One. So I'll let you ruminate a bit, because I'm sure there are some. Oh, I have a great idea. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, instead of doing a Q&A, I'd like I to do an A do. and Q. <laughs> okay, let me introduce you okay. to an A and Q. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Now my friends, <laughs> an A in Q is an answer and query or an ask and query. And as I move and see your bright faces, and those of you that are hoping I don't stop by you, <laughs> I will ask you, what are you thinking? I'm thinking about seeing your face in Pasadena in about 1978, and uh, the beautiful experience of seeing your films that night and, and tonight. Amazing. I don't know if that's a question, an answer, or what the heck it is, but it's, 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 it's the truth. That, my friends, is Terry Cannon. Terry Cannon gave me my first show outside of the lesbian community in the Bay Area by calling me up and asking me to come to Pasadena Film Forum. I didn't know a filmmaker could travel with their films. I didn't know a heterosexual audience would watch my films and seem to like them until Terry invited me. And what then? He gave me a check for my films. I didn't know I could get paid for my work. <laughs> Long live Terry Cannon. <laughs> well, I've been dying to ask her all night. Okay, Ms. Burke, my spouse. Oh, 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 we're having resistance here. Now, let me tell you I'm in charge. <laughs> this is not a Q&A. This is an A and Q. How did it feel watching yourself on the screen for at least 20 minutes in Tender Fictions? It felt like forever. I don't like to be photographed. I don't like to be filmed. And when I met Barbara 33 years ago, I said, you have to know one thing. I will never be naked in a film of yours. <laughs> and I never have. Um, and I really never wanted to be in a film. But you saw what happened. <laughs> so Think of the films I could have made. <laughs> <laughs> it's immediately when I start thinking. Yeah, she really changed my artistic career. Yeah, turned into documentaries of other people. <laughs> no, my subject matter wasn't available to me anymore. Mark, you and I, yeah, you and I have been friends for a long time now. I mean, even longer because uh, time has stretched through our constant chatting back and forth, texting about whether this color is right or that sound is right. And I want you to uh, tell me, what was the hardest part of working in restoration of these three films tonight? Um, well, these, I should probably talk about last night, I think. Because I, I feel like I didn't do very, I didn't do a lot on, th on these tonight. You know, we made new prints and, you know, there's a, always a certain amount of work to, to make sure it looks like it should look. Tender Fictions is a beautiful example because there's almost every type of imagery in it. I mean, there's stuff that you shot, you know, now 50 years ago, black and white, like eight millimeter. There's Kodachrome, there's video effects stuff, there's found footage, there's, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff in there. And so, I mean, part of that is just making sure it all, it, it, it looks both consistent and not consistent at the same time, right? But the hardest thing about working on your films in general is you're somebody who's so fluid and so responsive and so flexible that I know that sometimes you're looking at something you made even 10 years ago, let alone 40 years ago, and your mind has changed about how you think it should look or what you want from it. And so working with somebody who has such a fluid relationship to her own work has both been like really exciting and really frustrating because <laughs> I'm sometimes hoping for absolutes. Like, Barbara, is this right or not? Jesus, just tell me. <laughs> but one of my favorite things is very recently a film that I hope if you all come to some of the other screenings, there's a film that you made called Placemats, which I quite like. And I've never had this experience before, but you had initially prepared a soundtrack, which is a collage made up of like answering machine messages and other sound effects and stuff. But then a composer you knew said, oh, I want to make 
a, a track for one of your films and you end up using his track. And but maybe had some mixed feelings about having abandoned this other track that you made. Well, and I never liked his track. and you never liked his track, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But then we were talking and you said, Oh, maybe we should just combine the two tracks. And I said, oh, okay. And so when we were doing the audio restoration, John Polito from Audio Mechanics and I just kind of did it. And I was like, are you sure you want me to do this? And you were like, yeah, 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 let's go, go for it. And I sent it to you and you were like, oh, yeah, it's great. This, it's really, and you, you were so open and responsive and to give us that trust um, and that creative freedom in a way, I'm not supposed to do that, I'm a restorationist. <laughs> but that was really wonderful. I'd never been um, in a way given that kind of permission and I probably shouldn't really. But no, but it, but I felt it felt okay to do with you because I knew that that's w that's what you thrived on and that's why you wanted to you, that's how you work and so it felt like both a privilege and also appropriate to work with you in that way as an archivist too. So. It's been a lovely collaboration. It really has. <laughs> to go back to uh, the Q and A format, um, <laughs> um, I'm going to uh, ask you to give me exactly the first word that comes into your mind? Blue. Barbara. Bold. Yeah, mom. 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 Oh, baby doll. <laughs> You're the child I never had. <laughs> now. <laughs> Hat. Narcissism. Uh, Um, I've been thinking about it too long, but cheese was the first word that came to my head. Cheese. Cheese. Flea market. Mmm. Distance. Okay. And now, the ultimate question. How could these films be better? Oh. <laughs> With this one, you have a moment to think. And I'm going to look for a bright face. Who's hiding from me here? <laughs> <laughs> no, be okay. So I've been honest in my work. You got to be answer in your. You have to be honest in the response. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm supposed to tell you how you can make your film better. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do that. <laughs> Just um, a little. I mean, I think um, it, it's been incredible to watch your films with you, um, and I think it would be better if everyone could have that experience. <laughs> no, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, the last part of the A&Q is you get to ask the question, that you've been thinking about all night, but been afraid to ask. <laughs> oh, I'm just marveling at the exuberance of these films and the privilege of watching them with you. I'm not sure what the question is. Did you have to come to yours? I give you a minute. Your question, sir. What do you want to do next? Die without pain. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> Passing through. Did you have your question now? I'll come back. So you better. It's easier now than later. Okay. I said okay. <laughs> okay. There's always some, but I really push over the top. Ah, saved by another performance artist, Nina Weiss, from, who's now a filmmaker, now from the Bay Area. And where's my helper, who's going to carry on with, you don't need the mic, we need the mic, Nina. I'm trying to articulate it. And it, I think I have a similar question to the one you just asked, that lovely, bright young woman, which is, you know, now that you've had the opportunity to really look at the scope of your work mm -hmm. and are at the place you are in your life, mm -hmm. um, what have you learned 
that has made your work better? Patience. Patience. Not let anything get out of my studio without it being perfect in my sense of perfection. Even in uh, the film we showed um, in Colorado, and will be shown here sometime, I'm sure, Sanctus, um, I put in a shot just to be nasty, kind of. A shot that I should have taken out, it's just dust on the camera lens. And only I know that this is a total throwaway shot. It has nothing to do with x-rays of the human body. It was had to do with the fact that I didn't clean the lens on the optical printer. And it's just, you know, it's just dirt. <laughs> and I left it there for myself. I put it in to say, nothing can be perfect. So even though you're trying so hard, Barbara, accept the imperfections. Thank you, Nina. Wow. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. Thank you so much. I think that's a good place to end. Yes? yes it is. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for all your work. Oh, sure. Thank thanks Los Angeles. I really miss LA. Just being back here, the weather. Oh, yeah. And um, let's hope for the best that the fires are over. Yes, certainly let's hope they're contained soon. <laughs>